Welcome back to Rose Education, this is Ed. Today we're going to be talking about Clover Health once more. The ticker goes by CLOV. Make sure to drop a like this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave notifications on. If you would like to join our Discord channel server, you'll find it in the description below. It's a free chat room where you can ask me any questions you have on this video, or you can mention them down in the comments below. Let's jump right into this one. So, Clover Health. Now let's jump right into this one and if you would like to watch my previous video you'll find it in the description below. If this is the first time ever you're going to be watching Clover video, you're still going to be able to get a grasp of what I'm talking about. So just to give you perspective, what does Clover do? Clover do is a Medicare Advantage plan company. And original Medicare covers 80% for, for the part A, 80% of your hospital expenses, part B, 80% of your doctor's expenses. And then private insurance uh, plan C or Part C, very similar to like Clover Health, you can replace original Medicare with a Part C plan, like Clover Health. Part D, drug coverage. Original Medicare doesn't cover most of the RX drugs, but many Part C's plans do. Next, their investor relations. I want to show you a little bit of the latest news. Clover Health Mass General ACP Decisions Research Team secures grant from the National Institute of Health for innovative approach to advanced care planning. So this one here, this, they received five-year grant from the National Institute of Health to conduct clinical study with research with Massachusetts uh, General Hospital, Harvard Medical School, and ACP Decisions, a nonprofit foundation, etc. The goal of the study is to understand the effectiveness of using video-based advanced care planning resources to optimize serious illness Medicare for patients with chronic, life-limiting, illness, receiving home-based care, the innovative approach will incorporate predictive analytical and video technology to significantly expand access to advanced care planning for a highly vulnerable population of patients. Clover Health is actually uh, a really, uh, or at least the goal of Clover Health aligns with this research. Next, this is, this is actually back from IPOC. They estimated the worth of Clover Health to be around $590 billion by the end of 2025. Currently speaking, the market cap is around $3 billion. So really, they're putting in a massive upward scale by 2025. 10,000 plus new people becoming eligible every day, $150 million each day and $1 billion each week, and around $55 billion each year. Uh, I think that was actually the industry, so the worth worth of the market itself but um the market cap itself as it did say it's in the low billions the market share itself is 590 billion by 2025 so you can get to see even if we were to let's say take a very small percentage of that market share it's easier for it to multiply uh maybe to 10 billion etc they're the fastest growing medicare advantage plan in the u.s at around 25 percent cagr compared to their nine competitors i'm not ex or compared to the next nine competitors i'm not exactly sure how this changes in the last quarter we still don't have an updated presentation i would love to see that actually but they do have events coming up so we might actually get to see updated information around there um next here what i want to cover is a little bit off what their cycle is to capture and synthesize data apply machine learning to provide data driven analytical details and results improve clinical decisions making decisions to drive better care again through the analytical results share superior economic costs with members via lower cost and better benefits five drive strong market leading organic membership growth and the list goes on some of the things that I really wanted to show you, I've shown you a bit of a graph where it says that they're trying to give, uh, a, well, actually it's right here, trying to give better access at a lower annual cost. But some of the things that are very interesting for me is regulatory tailwinds. The government support for calculation methodologies, whether relating to Medicare, etc. cetera, uh, there will be effects for Biden Medicare planning towards this one. The effects are currently unclear on how Medicare or changes Biden would do to Medicare, etc., uh, or bills. Would it? Would something like Clover Health have a competition edge? From what we see here, is that perhaps yes, because they're offering around forty-one percent cost saving from Medicare. So there is potential there. By twenty twenty-five. The estimated total Medicare population is around seventy-three million, which is uh, higher from the sixty-two millions here. And of course, between here and then, their market share is expected to grow. 
Now, they've got hit pretty bad, and you would have to watch my last video for the earnings discussion. They got hit pretty bad because of COVID. Things weren't, weren't looking that great for them. Uh, but I'm assuming, based on what I've heard in the quarter earning, is that their projections for 2021 estimated 2022-2023 will continue on going. So for 2021 estimated, they estimate 30% member growth, 35% for 2020E, uh, 2022 estimated, 2023 estimated 40%. Premium revenue, 872, 1,214, again, this is in millions, by the way. So this is 872 million, 1.2 trillion, 1.7 trillion. So revenues are expected to, to grow. And their adjusted EBITDA margin is expected to be hit positive by 2023. So profitability by 2023 and long-term above industry average around 4% while maintaining an above industry growth around 10%. So again, they are not net profit or they're not their margins. Their EBITDA is not net positive. So that kind of gives us a bit of perspective onto a little bit of their financials, etc. If you would like to see their most up to date financials, not the, uh, the estimated or sorry, the anticipated ones or the forecasted ones estimated, you'll have to watch my last video where I do talk about their earnings a little bit more in depth. Next. So Clover Health, we covered that. Next here is institutional buyers. It looks like a lot of them are freaking out, especially yesterday, the day before. There's a lot of a reset, re, a sea of red. Some, except for Goldman Sachs here back in February, but a lot of it, especially in this last month, in the last few weeks of last month or a couple of weeks of last month, um, they've been actually unloading. And some people are speculating it's because of Shamath. Uh, the person behind or a big supporter of this one here has actually been with GameStop and that hurts hedges, etc. I think that's just a little bit mis misconception there. Um, for all I see, insiders are very quiet. Um, and one of the people, one of the people most influential here, or they get a lot of attention about this pack on Twitter is from us. So give him a follow if you're interested on Twitter. It sounds like he does share here and there information, but lately he's been very silent about this one, and it's quite interesting for myself. And yeah, so we can move on to now towards technical analysis. I was going to cover uh, one last thing here, and I'm going to do it right now, is the short interest based on Finviz. I'm not sure how accurate this is currently. We're sitting at 23% short float. So let's jump right into the technical analysis point of view right now. So from a technical analysis point of view, if you haven't done so before uh, we move forward, please make sure to subscribe and notifications on. It helps my channel a lot more than you can ever imagine. Now, on a one day perspective, things are looking like, well, it might have stabilized just a tad today. Uh, we see a little bit of a green candle in a sea of red. Now, the, given, of course, the, mark, the almost entire market rebounded half of the day today, the ADX is actually looking like, hey, there might be well, there is a negative trend here. Uh, it still isn't broken, but it'll be very interesting to see it break that way. One day isn't looking uh, that pers uh, filled in in terms of the technical indicators, but we'll expect for it to grow as we go on. The MACD here, you're looking like it's actually going to attempt a positive reversal, but we've been tricked before once here, once there, uh, a few times here and there. So you need to be very careful that it's not a bull trap. In terms of momentum, it looks like we've gone to negative 3.48. So still negative momentum, but better than before. And before moving on forward, let's do the two hour perspective quickly to see the intraday movements. A positive reversal. It's not a trend based on the ADX. Above 812, you can consider it leaving the bearish trading action zone. Above 890, it's actually bullish on a two hour perspective. The momentum is actually just above 0.27. It's highly overbought at 1167. Uh, so in net, or sorry, at even 10, it's even going up higher. So in a nutshell, what we get to see on a two hour perspective is that yes, it's attempting for reversal, but it has a lot of resistance on its way. And for that, we need to look a little bit into moving average bands. Moving average band, 1172 in the top, 1066 in the middle, and 959 in the bottom. The Bollinger bands, it dropped significantly below there today, and it's just crawling right on top you get to see it really is it's just continuing on going down volumes have been just a bit steady it's almost average volume so nothing significant stochastic fast and stochastic slow is saying well this is not actually a start perhaps you might have another green day but you need to be very careful there because you might either have 
it, it, things are looking a little bit sloppy. Now, on the Fibonacci retracement, significant support shows at 631, resistance 889, 1049, 1178, 1306, 1490, 1724. If I was to draw just price line actions, we get to see that this line here, almost at the eight bucks, is really important. It needs to break it, and that is a very, very strong resistance. 817 comes next, and then above there, it's 902. Above there, it's 939. Above there, it's 981. 1105, 1048, 1110, 1147, 1187, and 1217. Comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? Well, currently it's actually in a really significant downtrend. And even though it really just bounced a little bit today, it's still within this really uh, downwards channel. It's actually really continuing to drop. Now, I thought I might actually see fives today. And I've been watching this one very closely. I don't think that the continuous drop is just because of the short selling report by Hinderberg, but it's also related to a little bit of disappointment on a bit of the earnings that they've received. Do I think that this is probably going to be a $20 stock next year? There is a good chance for that. If you're trading for this one, sure, you can catch the intra bits. But if you're investing and you believe in this stock, then this price action going down shouldn't really be a worry for you because this is only back towards what, a month? Um, this is a new ticker. It's a new SPAC. So it is going to drop. It is going to drop before it runs again. And maybe running again would perhaps be 12 bucks. It wouldn't be that massive. But if you're trading, be very careful because your expectations for 20, 30 bucks is possible. But short term, it's unlikely. And I think it needs to accumulate. So far, I don't see an accumulation here. I see a drop. I can't wait for it to accumulate, and that's where I enter. Uh, some of you have already entered at the 630s, 640s, and they've already benefited today. For me, if I'm investing, I'm looking at a longer picture, and the accumulation is a big part for me, and I can start averaging down as we go or averaging up. If you believe in this and you think it's, this is actually a good discount, throw some entries in there. Average down, and you can average down even if it goes lower. Um, hopefully you don't need to average up even though that'd be really good for the long term short term averaging up I usually don't like doing that. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe and like and have a wonderful day.